Okay guys, in this video, I will discuss about the plant bracing and the vertical bracing. Now you may ask that I have already uploaded a video uh, which is talking about what is bracing, how bracing actually transfer load and why we should use the bracing. Okay, but in that video, I have got lots of comment which talks about what are the basic difference between plant bracing and vertical bracing, how any plant bracing works and how vertical bracing act okay so i thought it would be beneficial for those who have some doubt uh, related to plant bracing and vertical bracing okay so if you think that this video is a repetitive for you in that case you can skip it okay and by the way if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay so before uh, talking about the different type of bracing that is normally vertical bracing and plant bracing if you are a beginner in that case you should be familiar with these two main type of bracing that is plant vertical bracing here you can see this are vertical bracing this is one okay and this is also one vertical bracing okay and here this is another vertical bracing simply if you have a portal frame like this and if you in elevation use some bracing like this okay or like this this is vertical bracing right and here is also you can see this is another vertical bracing this is another vertical bracing okay and if you talk about the horizontal bracing in that case just consider this simple steel uh, skeleton of a building okay and here you can see that in the roof okay we have used some member like this okay so these are horizontal bracing okay so now i think you have got an overview about two different type of bracing now go one by one okay at the very first how the elevation bracing actually works okay so simply if you have a portal frame let's say this is the support this is the support and if you have fixed support then under the action of any type of lateral load it is stable right but let's say instead of fixed support you have some pinned support okay now when you have to use or you have to consider fixed support and when you have to consider this pinned support definitely you can go to the playlist and there you can watch my video that is the axis of structure okay in that video i have uh, elaborately discussed about when and how you have to consider the fixed support and the pin support by the way if you have pin support and also these joints are pin in that case if you have some lateral load what will happen yes the frame will simply collapse by mechanism okay so to make it stable what you have to do you have to make some arrangement so that this lateral load do not disturb your portal frame and what is the way simply you can put some bracing like this and now if you have some lateral load like this what will happen this load will transfer to this foundation through this member without disturbing your structure and this member is the bracing to be more specific this is the vertical bracing okay so in this structure here you can see that this is a very long structure and of course due to earthquake or due to wind load or other different load that is associated in your pipe rack mainly the lateral load like the pipe friction load okay or the uh, guide load or the anchorage load okay so due to all this lateral load these portal frames become unstable so to make it stable what you have to do simply you have to insert the bracing like this okay and here you can see that we have inserted this bracing okay so you can insert the vertical bracing like this or like this or like uh, let's say you have some problem so you are simply providing a bracing like this okay though it is a bit of complex but this is also one type of vertical bracing okay so now I think it is clear to you 
when we are supposed to use the vertical bracing and how the vertical bracing actually catering the lateral load without disturbing or without affecting the main portal right now come to the horizontal bracing okay so why horizontal bracing is important again due to the wind load or the earthquake load what will happen this beam okay so this is the roof beam so this roof beam try to actually bend like this okay and you know that in any type of roof beam or any type of beam we normally have a larger moment of inertia about the major axis so let's say this is the vertical load and this is the i section beam so if this is the section so of course this is the major axis right and about this major axis we have more moment of inertia so we have larger capacity of carrying the bending moment okay but if we consider the minor axis or this axis this is the minor axis so this is your minor axis so if we have any load about this minor axis so what will happen we have lower capacity to carry the bending moment and in this case here you can see that due to this lateral load the beam is actually bending about the minor axis so we have a bit of problem so we may have to use a very large section to cater this bending moment so if we do not want to do that what we have to do simply we have to bypass this lateral load okay we cannot let the load to affect our beam okay so for that what we have done we have simply connected all the beam we have connected all the beam like this okay here you can see that we have first connected all the beam now all this number one two three four four beam are united okay now the wind load or the earthquake load is coming okay so what will happen yes again all the four beam though they are connected what will happen all the four beam will buckle about their minor axis simultaneously nothing will be changed so what we have to do we have to actually apply or we have to provide some bracing like this okay and finally this bracing is actually connected with the vertical bracing so as a result of which what will happen well now the first load well let me use some another color all the lateral loads here 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 and here and here all the lateral load okay so all the lateral load for all the beams will be collected at this point or at this point or at this point where the bracing is actually connected with the beam okay so then what will happen this accumulated lateral load will be transferred to this joint why because only from this joint it will get a connection with the vertical bracing right now through this vertical bracing you will get transferred to this foundation right so let's say this is the lateral load this is the lateral load and here this is the lateral load this is also lateral load all of them are coming to this joint to this joint or to this joint then as they are connected by bracing they will come to this point okay from here it will go to this foundation okay so now i think it is clear to you how the plan bracing work and also how the vertical bracing work for its own lateral load as well as the lateral load that is coming from the plan bracing okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it